Hi, my name is John Helfen. I'm an Education Solutions Specialist with Autodesk. And today I wanted to create a quick video on uh, lofting in Inventor. I had somebody con contact me through my YouTube channel who was interested in it. So I just wanted to put together a quick demo uh, to give you some idea of what's available in loft. Um, so I'm going to create a, just a standard part file. Um, it creates my sketch for me uh, on my XY plane. I don't like the orientation. This is new in Venner 2012, uh, and to be honest, I just haven't had the chance to um, move my templates, um, which would carry all this information with it. So let me show you quickly. Um, what I'm doing is reorienting this so my XY is on the tabletop, kind of an, uh, how I like to work with my Z in the up direction. So once I'm in a proper isometric view, I can right-click on the home view and say set as home. Or set current view as home with a fixed view distance. Um, I can then click my what should be my front view, right click and say set current view as front. And now when I hit home, I've got my top front and right side views oriented the way I want them. Um, you can adjust them however you, you wish for your style. Um, but now I can get started sketching. So I'm going to just start out with a, a quick circle at the base. And what I'm going to do is create like a, a shampoo or ketchup bottle type shape. So I've got a, a three and a half inch circle here. Uh, I can finish my sketch and uh, move on to the next one. So over in the browser I have an unconsumed sketch now. Um, I have my origin folder which has all my origin planes which are hidden by default. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my XY plane and right click and select visibility to turn it on. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to leverage that to create the work planes and sketches for my next uh, uh, components in my loft. Um, now you could go ahead and create a work plane and select this work plane and go ahead and give it some distance and hit OK and then you could select that work plane and hit sketch and put you into a sketch on that plane. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit undo control Z on my keyboard control Z and go back to my asymmetric view. I'm going to show you a shortcut to do that. Um, if I know that I'm going to sketch at an offset distance I can just start my 2D sketch command I can left click and drag, let's say up to four inches, and hit OK. And now it's going to create that work plane and the sketch at the same time. Not a big deal, but um, you know it comes in handy when you are building lofts. Uh, it takes a few clicks out of the step uh, or out of the process. So now that I've got my uh, first sketch created, I'm going to start. With, I'm going to go ahead and create an ellipse up here. I'm going to go out quite a ways from the edge and just generally sort of up near the top here and add some constraints. So I want this to be tangent um, to, whoops, I want it to be tangent to this circle down here. So what I'm going to do is project that circle uh, from the first sketch up to this new one and I'm going to select it and turn it into construction geometry. So now uh, if I go tangent I can select this and I can select that construction geometry and now I have this will always be tangent on that edge. Now I mentioned um, this is Autodesk Inventor 2012 if I right click on my, I, I get a new right click menu. And one of the things I wanted to point out is because I, you'll see me doing this and I don't want you to think it's crazy or, you know, magic. Um, over to the left is the done command. To the top is the line command. To the bottom is the left is the general dimension command. Now it's important to know where these, posi these are positioned. Um, because once you know where they are, you can launch these commands without actually using the right click menu. Um, so if I move, you'll, off far enough from the menu and left click it's like canceling but what I want to do is add a dimension here for this edge you know to give this so I can control the width of this ellipse if I right click and drag down into the left and release I get my general dimension launched so what I'm able to do is uh, launch commands without actually getting into the right click menu uh, so I'll give that a three inch uh, setting there and I will uh, finish this sketch Okay, so next what I want to do is I'll add one more sketch here at offset. Let's make this, um, let's make that four inches and hit OK. Let's create a circle here to finish this off. Let's do 1.5 diameter. And now we will right click to the, drag to the left to hit done. And then I'll right click and I'll hit finish. And I'm back to a 3D view. So, there's the basic shape of my 
uh, or sections for my loft. Let's go ahead and just create a loft real quick just to show you what it looks like. Uh, so when you get into the loft command, the first thing you need to do is add sections. Um, so all you have to do is start selecting the sections that you want to use in the loft. And it will give you a preview of what you're going to get. So it's a pretty nice shape. It's going from the circle to the ellipse back to the circle. Um, I do have the ability to do some control in the dialog box to control, for example, um, how this um, line is leaving this sketch. Um, on this one I can say, so I can have some control over the shape within here and I can play with the angles and the weights uh, to get it uh, the shape I'm looking for. But I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because most people are going to want to be able to have really fine control over what this shape looks like. And the way you can do that is with rails. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a couple more rails or a couple of rails to help control that loft shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my uh, XZ plane and I'm going to sketch on it. And then I'm going to, let's flip around here real quick, uh, looking at the front view. Um, well, I guess I just want to be able to see it in 3D so that I can project some stuff. What I want to do is I'm going to create a line that follows the side of this bottle. And I'm going to do that by projecting these sections that I created to the sketch I just created. And what that lets me do is now I can use a spline and I can select the endpoints of that. I can select a point in the middle, select the endpoint of this one, select a point in the middle, and select the endpoint of this one. Uh, right click and select create to generate my spline. And what that does is it gives me uh, really fine control over um, the shape of that edge of the bottle. So as I drag this handle of this spline, I can control how that looks and, and, and what's going on with it. Um, how long, how much the line waits before it starts to curve to the next point, how much curve or what direction the curve is, is going to take when it leaves that point. Um, but before I do that and, and get into controlling that, let's do one thing. Let's, uh, let's create a line from the center point here. And let's select that and turn it into a center line. Now what I'm going to do is real quick, I'm going to mirror this, um, this spline over that, whoops, I don't want to mirror both. I just want to mirror that line across this center line. And I'm going to apply that. So now I have a mirror of this line so you can get a real uh, view of the shape as you're playing with things. So when I select this line, I can then use this handle to control the shape um, again, like I said. Um, I can make this vertical using constraints so that I know that this is leaving vertical all the time. Um, I can also do things like dimension this. Um, uh, so I can say, you know, it's a unitless number here. It's not an inch. It's just a unit so that it's just so that you can put a value to the control here. Um, Let me finish my dimension command. I can adjust this line a little bit, and you can kind of see the symmetry happening on the mirror. So I can get the basic shape of what I'm looking like. And down here, I don't want this to actually come in like this. I want it to come out. So let me select that line and move this handle generally over here. Now, the other thing before, we mentioned that we can, we can dimension to these. So what you want to do is make sure you right-click on that uh, point that has the handle attached to it and make sure activate handle is checked. If it's not checked, uh, you may run into a problem where you can't dimension it. Um, so you just got to remember that if, if it's not activated already, you may have to right click and activate it. But what that lets me do is I can right click and drag down to the left to create my dimension. I can dimension with precise control how I want this line to leave this section down here. Um, and again, I can also dimension this to control how long I want it to run before it starts to curve to the next point. So that's uh, maybe 0.5 is a little too much. Let's go to 1. There we go. And now what I can do is I can, let's finish up my dimension command. I can select this point and start to see what this curve is going to look like. Um, let's just kind of find a point that looks good here. I think that looks generally good. It's kind of the shape I'm looking for. 
And what that does is now I now have rails to control that uh, that loft. So let me finish that sketch. And here you can see in the isometric view, it's kind of like a wireframe generally. I mean, I could add as many rails as I want. So I could sketch across um, this plane and I could do, I could control the front and the back of this bottle as well. Um, but what I want to do, this is good for, for now. What I will do is run the loft command again. Let's zoom in. Do just like before, I'm going to select my sections and I'm going to get my preview. But now here's where those rails come in handy. If I zoom in here, I can select to add rails and I can select that first rail and you can see now the, the edge of the bottle follows that. And then I can select my second rail to control the other side. And now you can see the, you know, what I've got is very precise control over the loft, um, the shape, the size and, uh, and how this thing looks. And I can go ahead and create the loft. Um, let me turn off my work planes just so they're hidden and out of the way. And let's say, for example, we can do our next step. Let's um, actually let's cancel this. Let's fill at the bottom here because, you know, you don't you want a nice soft edge on that. Let's drag it a little bit. And kind of get feedback of how much curve, maybe not that much. Let's go. Yeah, 0.875. There you go. That looks nice. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And now let's uh, let's go ahead and shell this thing out. I'm going to remove this top face and just make this 0.025 thickness and hit OK. And what you get now is a shelled out you know bottle or shape. Now keep in mind this is all parametric. So I can go back say um, to this work plane here. I can select it and edit its dimension. Maybe I want that neck a little bit longer, maybe an inch longer. Let's go up to five and I can hit check and then I can hit local update, which is up in the quick access toolbar and it will update everything based on that. So now you can see it's just moved that profile up a little bit and made that thing an inch taller. I can also go back, you know, if you really want to, you know, when you're finished, you can go back and, and edit these sketches to adjust the rails. Say maybe now that I, I, I raise that a little bit higher, you can see it comes in a little too far. I can go back and I can always adjust this point and drag just a little bit to adjust that curve and maybe make it a little bit lower, something like that. So now it's not, you know, coming in on itself here, making the neck too skinny. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and make it a little smoother. And I'll go ahead and finish this sketch and now the bottle will update. Uh, based on that change and on that rail. So there you have it. Uh, crash course in loft, how to create rails, how to create your section views, um, and even some tricks on work planes. So hope that helped everybody. Uh, look forward to uh, speaking with you again shortly. Thanks.